redesign options should be prioritized in general with respect to two dimensions. The first dimension is the impact of implementing that redesign option. This means the improvement or decrease of performance that it will bring along each of the dimension of the devil's quadrangle. The second dimension is the difficulty of implementing this particular redesign option. Some options require only small reorganizations in the work that can be implemented by just changing the instructions that are given to process workers to perform certain tasks in the process. Some others requires deploying new infrastructure or making significant changes to IT infrastructure, or in some cases even requiring business partners such as suppliers to make significant changes in their own processes. In that case, they will have a high level of difficulty. We can organize the redesign options in a so-called pick chart that we have seen before in the context of qualitative process analysis. In a pick chart, you organize items according to the two dimensions, impact and difficulty, and you divide them into quadrants. There are those redesign options that have a large payoff and that are easy to implement, and we call them the implement of redesign options. These are the things we should consider first as a priority. It's, in other words, the low-hanging fruit. Then there are those redesign options that are difficult to implement, but that have a big payoff. This is like big investment, big payoff. They should also be considered, but they put us in front of a challenge, and therefore they might be given slightly less priority than the low-hanging fruit. On the other hand, we have those redesign options that have a small payoff, uh, but that are easy to implement. These are options we should consider. They are very possible, they are very feasible, but because they have a small payoff, they might get less priority than those in the implement quadrant. And finally, there is the kill quadrant, where we will put issues that are at the same time hard to implement and have a small payoff. These are probably issues we should not be considering. Let us consider, for example, the redesign options that we saw in the equipment rental process. First, we had the possibility of eliminating approvals for small rental requests. That option has a relatively small payoff. On the other hand, it is relatively easy to implement. All we have to do is to put in place guidelines that tell process workers very precisely when is the approval required and when it is not required. Then we have the second redesign options to replace altogether the per case approvals for rental requests with the empowerment of the site engineer to rent anything they need so long as they follow certain guidelines and putting in place certain statistical controls. That option can have a larger payoff than the previous redesign option. It is also relatively easy to implement what we have to do is to define the guidelines under which uh, rental requests should be made so that the site engineer can follow them and to put in place uh, statistical controls so that the works engineer you know, can double check the rentals that are being done. Then we have the third redesign option, which was to compose together tasks where the site engineer creates the rental request, where the equipment is being selected and the equipment is being checked for availability. These three tasks can be combined together. It is again relatively easy to implement. What we have to do is to empower the site engineer to perform all three tasks and assign this responsibility to them. It can have a relatively big payoff because it eliminates a, a number of handovers between the site engineer and the clerk. The fourth redesign option was to specialize the process and to consider having one variant for small equipment and one variant for large equipment. As the small equipment is less important, this will allow us to provide more efficiency to certain cases, but it will be difficult to implement because we have to essentially redesign two processes, one for small and one for large uh, claims. And that means putting in place a number of guidelines on how these processes should be executed. Therefore, it is in the kill quadrant. It has a relatively small payoff and it is hard to implement. Then we saw two redesign options that had to do with improving the communication 
in particular making aware the site engineer of when will they receive a certain piece of equipment and also asking the site engineer if they needed extension for a particular piece of equipment that they were holding. These are relatively difficult to implement because they will require us to ask the suppliers of equipment to inform us, for example, of the dispatch of a given equipment at the right moment. In this improvement option, we need a change in the processes of our suppliers, and those are in general difficult to obtain. On the other hand, this can have a relatively big payoff because it will give much more visibility to the site engineer regarding the status of their requests. And finally, we saw two automation options. One option was to provide a self-service so that site engineers could consult the catalog of equipment with the supplier. The second option was to automate the process end-to-end. -end. As this requires the deployment of technology, this will be a relatively difficult, hard to implement. However, it can have a large payoffs in terms of reducing defects and also providing higher visibility to the stakeholders in the process and by the same token, reducing cycle times. Once we have the redesign options aligned in a pick chart, we can start discussing the relative priorities and making business cases for each of these redesign options. This becomes the realm of business case development. We'll take a number of those issues and prioritize them and determine the relative overall payoff versus the relative investment that they require in order to determine which set of redesign options should be implemented.